Hey y'all, today I have 10 quick and easy Valentine DIYs to share with y'all. They are fun and affordable to make. And did I say they're easy? They're easy. And I think you're gonna like it. So let's just get into the video. On my channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. Before we get into any of the DIYs, I did wanna share that this video is part of a playlist. It's the Love Corner collaboration, and there's a bunch of hosts. We're all hosts, and these women are incredible. I just always feel so like, oh, thanks for inviting me. <laughs> when they invite me to be part of a collab or a playlist, so I'm excited to share. I'm gonna have the link to the playlist, and I think to their channels in the description box below, so I do hope you check it out, because I think you're gonna be, um, find it fun and inspiring, and I want you to meet my friends. Now let's get on to the video. I told y'all that the DIYs were fun, quick, and easy, and I wasn't lying. <laughs> so I took one of the iconic Dollar Tree calendars. You know, when I first started crafting and kind of focusing on crafts on my channel, the Dollar Tree um, calendars were so hard to find. Anyways, I'm gonna use one of the preview month photos on the back. I'm using this love one, and then on the left there, you see the little red truck with the hearts in the um, bed of the truck. And then I glued three Jenga blocks or tower tumbling blocks together. My set had some, these dark chocolate colored ones, but I mean, it doesn't really matter, but, um, I just thought it was interesting. Anyways, then I put some Mod Podge on one side of the Jenga blocks, let it dry completely. And then I put that little calendar preview thing on top. I put the parchment paper to protect it and I used my little heat press to reactivate the Mod Podge. And then I did the same thing for the other side so that both sides had um, kind of a reversible sign. And this is how one side turned out. Super cute, no wrinkles, and really, really easy to do. And I think it's my new favorite way to Mod Podge. We're already moving into DIY number two. So I have just some scrap um, copy paper and I'm laying down a piece of masking tape, sticky side up, and I've just anchored it down with some little pieces on the end. And then I'm putting these hearts that I had previously paint, painted black, just flipped them over and I'm sticking them down on the sticky side of the tape so that I can paint them again. I wanted to change the color because the black when I was putting it together, it just didn't really work out. So I'm just giving it a good coat of Rust-Oleum's Chalk Ultra Matte Paint in the color linen. And this just makes it so easy to, to paint and you can just get around the corners and all that kind of stuff. Once that was done, I did notice that on the edges there, it's, it just looked messy, it looked sloppy. So I grabbed several of the hearts together and I'm just using a clamp to kind of hold them so that they can keep together so that I can paint them again. And when I say paint them again, I'm just taking some black paint and going around the edge of it so that it looks a little neater because I just thought it looked a little, I don't know, sloppy <laughs> or messy or something like that. And not that you're really gonna see it, but just in case you do, I kinda wanted it to look finished out. Once that was complete, I took some E6000 and I'm using the black E6000. So if you didn't know, E6000 comes in several colors, <laughs> well, two colors that I know of, clear and this black. So just make sure when you're buying it, you're getting the right one. I'm not using hot glue because I found that hot glue just seems to like the glue will, it'll pop off, like your pieces won't stay together. And I even use the Gorilla Glue and it doesn't work. So I am using the E6000 in black and just gonna be attaching them like that. And just be careful which direction you're doing the um, clothespin. I was gonna say paper clip, but it's not a paper clip, it's clothespin. Just make sure which way direction you're doing it so that the heart is facing the right way when you go to um, clip up your little photos. And a couple of the pieces did need some refreshing after I did the black paint because I guess I'm a messy painter. <laughs> and I got some black on the rest of the heart. So anyway, just freshening up a couple of those pieces as needed. And y'all look at this, how super cute. Now my granddaughter actually made the grandkids make life grand sign and I'm just adding my little photo clips. I have this printer that makes, prints out the, the photos to look like Polaroid pictures, and I just think it looks adorable. This was an inspo piece that I saw at Dollar Tree, it was probably a year or two ago, and 
I decided, you know, it's a little too big for the space that I was going to be putting it in. So I was remaking it. I was going to be putting it on a tear tray and I wanted something smaller. So I just cut out some wood in the shape of a house and we're going to make it into an envelope. And I'm standing with Waverly wax in the color antique and I'm putting it on, applying it with a paintbrush and then wiping it off with a damp cloth. Then I'm taking a white paint pen. Look at me measuring. <laughs> I'm taking a white paint pen and I'm just making it look like an envelope. Then I'm taking my jigsaw and I'm cutting out another piece. Um, I'm, it's really easy to use power tools. You just have to be patient with yourself and you do need a little bit of practice, but I found it's actually really kind of cool to make my own stuff instead of having to source it. I can make more things because I can customize it to what I want. This is going to be, <laughs> it looks kind of like a Pac-Man, but this is going to be a mailbox. And again, I'm just staining it with the Waverly Wax in the color antique, painting it on and wiping it off with that damp scrap piece of cloth. Sometimes I apply it with the, you know, the cloth. Sometimes, I don't know, I just do it different ways, but that's how I'm doing it right now. Again, taking the white paint pen and just kind of outlining, um, and making it look dimensional, making it look like a mailbox. It's like those blue mailboxes, but it's not blue. It's Waverly Wax and Color Antique. <laughs> and it's kind of in the details. This is the little part at the top where you open it up. And then, of course, I had to add the little eagle and the word mail so you'd know what it was. I think it really turned out cute. <laughs> if I do say so myself. Now, some of these I'm going to be just showing in the final reveal because they are projects that I made in previous years, but I wanted to add them here because they're going on my tear tray in my love corner. So I am taking this paint stick and you can get these from Dollar Tree, not Dollar Tree. You can get these from like Lowe's, Home Depot or something like that. And then I also took this scrap piece of wood that I had and I'm just marking off where I'm going to be cutting it in just a few minutes. I don't know why I'm talking like that. <laughs> I was kind of watching myself. What, what am I doing here? So I'm measuring it out because I'm going to be making little um, love letters. I'm also doing the same with cardboard. Cardboard is, for the most part, easy to find. It's free, usually, because it came on a box. And so I'm just, again, marking off different... Um, rectangles because I'm going to be making those little love letters like I said. Now I'm just cutting everything out and outlining it with a white paint pen. My white paint pens, <laughs> my paint pens in general just seem to dry up too quick but maybe I don't use them enough I don't know. I'm just going all the way all the way all the way around and then I'll come back in and add the details to it. You want it to look like the back of an envelope, so I'm just making that little kind of V shape there. Dollar Tree has these felt hearts. It comes in a pack of like a million or so. And um, I'm not using those. I'm using those. Those right there. Pick those up, Lisa. And I'm just peeling off the little sticky part and attaching it to the back of the envelope. That little scrap piece of wood that I was measuring out earlier, I cut it out and I'm painting it white. And you can see I have various sizes just to kind of add interest. And I'm using, I believe that's the color plaster. Or it might have been Adirondack. I still always feel awkward when I say that. <laughs> the name, Adirondack. Adirondack chairs. Yeah. Anyways, you see what I'm doing. Just painting. Now I'm using a black paint pen. Kind of mixing it up a little bit. <laughs> I'm using a black paint pen to outline the envelope and just the various sizes and adding that little V. And again, I'm going to be using one of those felt hearts to add to the back. Okay, a super fun way to display these is in a little gumball machine. I actually made this out of a terracotta pot, a fishbowl from Dollar Tree, and that little lid is from another glass piece from Dollar Tree. And spray paint at the bottom in the top gray, then used E6000 to glue them together. Anyway, I'm putting in red tissue paper and then I'm strategically placing the little love letters that I made. And they turned out so stinking cute. I just love them, but I didn't want to fill them up all the way. So that's why I used the tissue paper to kind of, 
you know, pad the area a little bit. And y'all, look at it. Isn't it so cute? I just love it. And yeah, it's so easy to make. All right, this next DIY, I'm taking these two heart-shaped signs, I guess shelf setters, if you will, that I got from Dollar Tree. I've had mine in my stash for quite a long time, but I did see them recently at a Dollar Tree, so I know they're still out there. Anyway, I take a soaking wet rag and I leave it on for about 15 minutes. And then when I take it off, I just take my little scraper thing that I got from Dollar Tree and I just start scraping it off. Now on this particular one here, you're gonna notice that there's still some glue residue. And it, while that's, I, I recommend scraping it off. You could try to sand it off, but you're gonna gum up your sander with the glue residue, so I wouldn't do that. This one, the glue came off really easy. I mean, it cleaned it off really pretty good without too much trouble. I take the wet rag and the scraper tool and the little uh, blade thing and I just work it off until I get all the glue residue off both pieces. I do take my heat tool to take off the little um, stickers. I don't like it when the stickers are on. I mean, some people probably wouldn't even see it, but I don't know. I just think it looks more finished when you take off the stickers. I sanded it as needed, but it really actually didn't even really need it because I'm going to be covering it up with <laughs> scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I'm just cutting out the heart shapes. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And then I'm taking some Mod Podge and I'm spreading, <laughs> flinging it around apparently. I'm spreading it around so that I have good coverage. Not a super thick coat, but I'm making sure that I go all the way to the edge. And then I'm taking that scrapbook paper, laying it on top. And I'm gonna lay that piece of parchment paper on top and I'm gonna use my mini heat press to activate that Mod Podge again and adhere it to the sign. This works so, so much better. I used to do Mod Podge the old way, and in fact, one of the DIYs today, I, I do do it the other way, but this, man, there's like no wrinkles, nothing. It's, it just adheres so well. All right, here's how the hearts turned out, and I'm telling you guys, if you've not tried the Mod Podge first, let it dry, put your item on there, and then use the mini press to adhere it, I'm telling you, it's like magic. It works so good. And these turned out so cute. They're in my bathroom and I love them. Got this little tic-tac-toe game board piece thing from the Dollar Tree, but in the plus section. And I'm just gonna be staining the tray with Waverly Wax in the color antique, painting it on. And I'm trying to get in all the crevices because sometimes this wood, I'm not exactly sure why, but sometimes the wood Parts of the wood won't take the stain. Uh, again, I'm not really sure why. Um, it's not for me to question <laughs> because in the end it turns out just fine, but I'm just painting it on and then I take that little wet uh, or damp scrap piece of cloth and I wipe it off. Then I'm taking the hearts and I'm painting half like that so that by the time I get to all pieces, I can go back to the other first piece and paint the other side of it but I'm just painting one side white because, oh, and I'm gonna paint the X's. I don't know why I painted the X's white because they're not even gonna be white, but there you go. I found a bunch of little vintage looking Valentines online, just did some searches and I snagged the images and made just like a little, I printed them off on tissue paper in my copier. And now I'm Mod Podging the old fashioned way well, I guess because it's a vintage Valentine, I should do it the old fashioned way, right? So I'm just adding a little bit of Mod Podge to the heart, and then I'm laying down the various Valentines, just kind of arranging them how I like it. As those dry, I am gonna be painting the X's with, um, I believe I'm using Christmas red. And I'm just painting them all over, front, back, the sides, the <laughs> tops, the bottoms, everything. Now that the Mod Podge is dry, I'm using my finger sander and I'm cleaning up the edges of each of those hearts. I'm painting the other side of the heart with vivid pink, just in case you wanna flip them over and, I don't know, be more versatile, who <laughs> knows? And this is how it turned out. I, I really, I don't know, I just really like this one. I just think it looks so, like, just cute and just different, you know? 
Let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, here's another DIY. I don't even know what number on, I, I lost count. But this one is really easy to do. I took some heart-shaped grapevine wreaths and I think I got them from, I think Dollar Tree, but maybe, maybe Hobby Lobby, I'm not exactly sure. But I'm just tying them together with some twine and kind of making a, just a little row of five of them. And then I'm taking these little paper hearts, paper hearts, paper rose, paper roses, name that tune. Okay, it was Maria Osmond. Anyways, so I'm just taking a little red heart and gluing it in between, and that's how it turned out. And I actually attached um, some twine to each side, and that's what's hanging over my stove. I used to like to just put a little garland over the stove just to kind of, you know, zhuzh it up a little bit. <laughs> and that's what's there. I just think it looks so sweet. It's simple, but just really sweet looking. Oh my gosh. Okay, um, we're getting to the end. I do know that. But this is going to be an envelope um, with a little message, piece of paper sticking out of it. So I'm using, again, that Christmas red. And then I decided to get crazy with the vivid pink and some white mixed in, making these like big polka dots. And then I thought, well, that wasn't enough. So I used some plaster and the end of a paintbrush and just started adding all these little dots like crazy all over the place. But I mean, I think it's turning out cute, but it's just kind of like, I don't know, I didn't really have a plan. <laughs> but, um, then I'm taking a Sharpie marker and that one was a little dry out. So I get the other one and then part of me is like, oh, don't use that one because that's the good one. <laughs> like, like I couldn't get another Sharpie marker, you know, I don't know, like your limit is one good Sharpie marker. I don't know. So again, just making that line so that it looks like an envelope. And I kind of had sketched out the wording for this. And then I'm just going and filling it in. I'm using a paint pen this time. I had a paint pen the whole time. I don't know why I didn't use it on the other lines. But I do go back and outline the entire envelope as well as go over the lines that I already drew. And then I take a white paint pen and I'm drawing lines, a dot, a heart, a dot, a line, a dot, a heart, a line. You get it. Just kind of adding a little, little fun to it. That's how it turned out. I, this is one of my favorites. I just think it looks, I don't know, just looks super cute. <laughs> and it's going to go next to my tear tray. Okay, I'm going to give you my thoughts and ideas on styling a tear tray. I did take this placemat because I have this little wooden ladder thing there. And then I laid that Be Mine sign in front of it. Then I gathered some of the things that I wanted to put on the tear tray so I could kind of see how they went together. Some of the items I didn't use, I just put, you know, put back into the box to use somewhere else. But I'm trying to see how everything fits. And then I sometimes have to use little blocks to raise it up so that you can see it. Oh, hello, Neo. I have to use like wooden blocks to raise things up so you can see them better. And then I like to use little filler pieces like these love letters that I made, love letters that I bought from Hobby Lobby and that kind of thing. And so that it all just kind of, I want it to look full but not like jumbled where you can't see stuff and you just have to fiddle with it, readjust, go back, readjust some more until it looks how you want it to look. That's the important thing. Oh gosh, y'all. That's our granddaughter Kennedy and she's pushing Poppy, fake pushing him into the water, but we were in Seattle. It was funny. Anyway, that's a tic-tac-toe board. And then there's that placemat with the Be Mine sign under it. And I like how this looks so far. I did add a couple things and I'll show you that in a second, but I wanted it to be full, but not too full. The only thing I think I would add later would be that stuffing that you put like in gift bags and stuff, but my cats would be like all over it. They're already going to probably take those hearts and the, the little letters and I'll find them all over the house. But as you can see, I added two houses to kind of make it look a little bit fuller in the back. But I had to put that one house that's on the bottom right on several pieces of wood blocks so that you could actually see it. But I think this turned out so good. I love this little love corner in my house and I hope you enjoyed this video as well. Hey y'all, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate the company while I craft and I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found some ideas that might inspire you to create something on your own. If you do, let me know in the comments below. Let me know which one was your favorite. And don't forget, there's a playlist below. 
and tons of other crafters and creators that have great ideas and inspiration for you as well. And if you want to follow me, like here on YouTube or over on Instagram or TikTok, my handle is Our Great House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye! What is this? Like, bye? No. <laughs> bye! <laughs>